In this video I'm going to be doing some examples of integration using the power rule. All right, and I might note that this is uh, part two of two. All right, it's a second video. Um, in the first uh, video I just kind of introduced what an antiderivative is, what an indefinite integration is, um, a lot of vocab and some basic integration rules before we actually start with the power rule. Okay, um, but this video is going to concentrate on power rule. Okay, so power rule basically states that if we are integrating um, something x raised to some number dx. Okay, so I've got something raised to a power. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my x variable. I'm going to add 1 to my power, and then as the coefficient, I will have 1 over whatever I got when I added 1 to that power. All right, and then plus c at the end for my integration. All right, now that is the official formal um, power rule written out algebraically. All right, may uh, seem a little confusing, but once we start doing some examples, it should fall into place. Okay, so we'll start out with really simple and then we'll go from there. All right, let's say on my first example here, I'm trying to integrate x to the seventh dx. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that seven, I'm going to add one to it. So my new exponent is going to become an eight. So x to the eighth. All right, and then in front, I'm going to put 1 over whatever I got when I added, so that would be a 1 eighth, and then I can't forget the plus c. Okay, so this is indefinite integration, all right, using the power rule. All right, now for my second example right here, you're looking at this to begin with initially, you're trying to integrate 1 over x to the third dx, all right, but I don't have something raised to a power. All right, so you're going to use your laws of exponent. You're going to rewrite this first, move it to the top, and use a negative 3 as your exponent there. So then really I'm integrating an x to the negative 3 dx. All right, now, all right, I can apply the power rule. All right, so my exponent is a negative 3. When I add 1, all right, then I should get a negative 2. So it'll be x to the negative 2, and then I need to put it over 1, all right, and initially, even if you want to write 1 over negative 2, that's fine, plus c, all right, but then take this and write it, um, you know, better notation, pull that negative up in front, so negative 1 half x um, to the negative 2, and then um, a lot of them don't like negative exponents there, so if you don't like negative exponents, get rid of that as well. So it'd be like a negative 1 over 2x squared plus c. Okay, so that's probably the best final answer of how that one should probably be written. All right, um, let's do another one that would have a little bit of algebraic uh, manipulation to it. I think I can squeeze one more on this piece of paper right here. All right, let's say we are integrating maybe, say, the square root of x dx. Okay. First thing you're going to need to do is, okay, I don't have it as a power, so I can rewrite that radical as um, x to the one-half. So I can integrate x to the one-half dx. Okay, now you're going to have to get used to do, doing fractions quite a bit here. I'm going to add 1. All right, when I add 1 there, I'm going to have, it'd be adding 2 over 2, so I'd have the 3 halves there. All right, so I'd have an x raised to the 3 halves. All right, now, if we follow this, all right, you're always going to have like 1 over 3 halves. Well, that's a complex fraction. You're going to want to simplify that. And basically what that boils down to is then flipping that coefficient there. Um, so it becomes a 2 thirds x to the 3 halves plus c. Okay, so writing this step is not really important. All right, you get to where you're really fast at this. You add one, you get three halves, and then you just automatically know it's going to be uh, the reciprocal there of two-thirds in front. Okay, um, let's do some more examples. There's lots of different types of algebra manipulation that can be done here. Um, let's do one that um, where we're integrating maybe, say, um, an x plus 2 dx. All right, usually textbooks are going to put those set of parentheses around that. All right, in the uh, basic integration rules that I introduced in the first video, if you have several 
different things you can write each of them individually all right so there is a rule that says I can integrate x dx and then add to that whatever I get when I integrate 2 dx okay and notice when I do if I do choose to show this step and I do choose to separate them I need a dx on each one of those okay you cannot leave that out all right now integrating this one I've got an exponent of 1 so I add 1 so that would be an x squared put it over 1 1 half all right and then technically I would have a little constant integration on this this one all right now integrating a constant here all right, if you remember from the basic integration rules, that's going to be a 2x. All right, you could also think of it if you had to, if like you were struggling on that one and it didn't kind of make sense, there's a little imaginary x to the 0 there. Add 1, that'd be a 1, put it over 1. Okay, so you'd get your 2x there. Um, and then plus another constant of integration there because you've got both of them. When you're going to write the final answer though, you're just going to have one constant of integration. I'm probably going to put these in order, descending order of my exponents, and then I'll have one uh, plus c at the end of that. So for a final answer, maybe say a one-half x squared plus a two x plus a c. Okay, and if you're um, in one of my classes, I'm not going to necessarily right here at this step make you break this up into two like that because you can just look at each one of these, integrate them individually, and then put the plus C. Okay, so let's do an example of that, not showing that middle step here. Um, if I was going to integrate maybe say a 3x to the fourth minus a 5x squared plus an x dx. Okay, uh, like I said, in my, in my class in particular, I don't make them write this line out. I let them integrate each one of them individually as long as we understand that you it's legal to do that. Okay, so integrating right here, add 1 to that exponent, I would get a 5. I've already got a coefficient of 3 right there, so 3 fifths x to the fifth. Okay, minus sign's going to stay because this is a positive exponent. I want to add 1 there. 2 plus 1 is going to give me a 3. I already have a coefficient there, so 5 thirds x to the third. All right, plain x here. I've got a 1 exponent. Add 1 to it. I get a 2, so that would be a 1 half x squared with a plus c at the end. Okay, that plus c is very, very important. You leave off the plus c on an indefinite integration, and then the whole answer is going to be counted wrong. Okay. All right, now, um, one other example before we end this video. Because um, I want to show a couple different ways that you can do this. The algebra manipulation is going to work any way that you want as long as you're doing a, a legal algebra manipulation. All right, so in other words, if I had something that looked a little more complicated, maybe say the integral of an x plus 1 all over the square root of x dx. All right, and the only thing you know at this point is that power rule. All right, so you've got to really manipulate this around. Okay, a couple different ways I could do it. I could break this into two separate individual fractions. And actually, in all honesty, I do think this seems to be a little bit harder for students, but it is a method. I could integrate, say, x over, and then that radical x, write it as x to the 1 half, all right, plus and then 1 over x to the 1 half. So you could break it up like that. And if you, you are going to want to make sure you check, when you add these two things, you have to get this, what you started with, back. So adding fractions, you would add those denominators, keep the same denominator, and you'd add on top. So it is an equivalent answer. All right, now you're going to do some laws of exponents. Got a little imaginary one right there. So switch up your laws of exponents manipulate it a little bit farther here I would have an x to the one half and on this one move it up to the top make it a negative so x to the negative one half okay now I've got single powers here I can implement that power rule alright and again I usually let them my students just integrate straight here not breaking it up all right, if I add 1, I'd be adding 2 over 2. That'd give me a 3 halves. So flip in front, 2 thirds, x to the 3 halves. All right, adding 1 on this one, if I add 2 over 2, I'm going to have a positive 1 half. All right, 1 over 1 half would give me a 2 here, x to that 1 half, 
and then plus C. Okay, now that was one way to break that integral up. All right, now um, a different way that you could have broke it up. Not that I'll, I'm not going to redo the same, the whole entire example. You will get this example no matter this answer no matter which way you go. But if I start with that original integral, x plus one over square root of x dx. All right, and then if I take this and write it as an x to the one half, and then move it to the top. All right, that's using laws of exponents. That would be a legal move there. I would integrate. I would have the x plus 1. Moving that to the top with the negative exponent, I would have an x to the negative 1 half. All right, and then my dx. All right, at that point, um, I would just probably distribute right there. All right, and when you distribute, you multiply like bases. You add those exponents. So your integration then would be an x to the 1 half and 1 times x to the negative 1 half would just be your x to the negative 1 half. You'd still have that dx there on the end because I haven't done any integration yet. And if you notice then this line and this line matches because at that point then it becomes the exact same problem. All right, but getting to that spot in a little bit different way. Now, either way you go, you're going to have to use lots of laws of exponents and lots of algebra manipulation to get that down to where you can then use the power rule. All right, um, so just a few examples using the power rule. All right, so this would be a, a video you would watch very, very early into your inter, um, integration chapter uh, because you've only got one rule so far. Um, if this was helpful and you liked it, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and be sure and share with your friends. Thanks for watching.